we're going to do a lecture called calling email script. In this lecture we will evaluate different choices of call calling and also some sample emails that you can use in your job search in Canada. We're going to start with the tips for making a successful job search call call. You need to send your resume and cover letter ahead of time and mention that you will call to explore opportunities. And also, cold calls will be more likely to get results when you connect with department managers than with the human resource staff. Okay? So if you're applying for a specific job, you can talk directly with the managers, it will be very helpful. Of course, they might also channel you to the human resource staff. Offer to schedule a time to talk. And always be flexible. Reach out to your LinkedIn contacts, family, friends, college alumni, and other professional associates to identify contacts at your target organization. Prepare a concise and compelling opening statement that summarizes your reason for calling. You're going to need to use a brief elevator pitch. Share your qualifications. Be ready to support your case with examples of how you have successfully applied your skills in the past. You need to share examples that can describe how you can benefit the company and how can you fulfill their needs for the employer. Very important. Be prepared for resistance. Anticipate your objections like lack of experience or skills on your part and prepare counterpoints providing that you could excel if higher. You will encounter some resistance. So just practice some possible questions that they may ask about your lack of experience or skills in Canada and try to provide a counter argument that might convince them to do the hiring for you. As for the next step, close the conversation with a specific request such as an in-person meeting or referral to another individual involved in the hiring and ask about the possibility of an informal meeting to explore future opportunities. Always leave the door open for future opportunities. Follow up with the communication thanking the individual for their time and provide a link such as a linking URL in that communication. It can be an email. All right. Don't give up if you can get through. When you're calling and call calling, many calls will be routed to a voicemail. Try to leave that voicemail with a clear message, your name, phone number or email address so they can contact you back. Be ready to leave a short message highlighting the basis of your interest and the key assets that you will bring to the employer. So basically you're giving the reason why you're calling, you're stating your interest, if you have a position in mind even better, and what access and what skills can you provide to the employer. Be brief, clear and speak slowly. Wait a week between calls and limit yourself to a three total calls in most cases. You don't want to be uh, stuck in the, per the, the employer. That will give you a bad uh, bite to the employer and might just refuse to see you or hear from you. But at least wait a week between calls and limit yourself to three total calls. So in a three week period, if you don't get an answer at the third week, then you can probably go on. But just pace it the right way so the employers or the people in the HR department don't get a bad impression about you. Here is a sample of the call contacting message. Just keep it in mind you can uh, use this as a, a modified depending on your needs. What's an elevator pitch and how can it help you in your job search? An elevator pitch, which is also called an elevator speech, is a quick synopsis of your background and experience. The reason it's called an elevator speech is that you should be able to present it during a brief elevator ride. Don't write. This short speech helps you introduce yourself to career connections in a compelling way. 
This speech is all about you, who you are, what you do, and what you want to do if you're job hunting. Your elevator pitch is a way to share your expertise and credentials quickly and effectively with people who don't know you. When and how to use an elevator speech. Job fairs, LinkedIn summary, careers events, networking events, job interviews. Elevator pitch examples. I create illustrations for websites and brands. My passion is coming up with creative ways to express a message and drawing illustrations that people share on social media. That's one example. I recently graduated from college with a degree in communications. I work on the college newspaper as a reporter and eventually as the editor of the art section I'm looking for a job that will put my skills as a journalist to work. I have a decade worth of experience in accounting, working primarily with small and mid-sized firms. If your company is ever in need of an extra set of hands, I'd be thrilled to consult. What to say? Your elevator speech should be brief. Restrict the speech to 30 to 60 seconds. Very important. You need to be persuasive, share your skills, try and send your speech to a friend or record it. It will help you know if you are staying within the time limit and giving a coherent message. Be flexible. It's your chance to make a great first impression with a potential employer. Mention your goals. You don't need to get too specific just general goals. Know your audience and speak to them. Don't speak too fast. You want to make sure they understand you very clearly. Call contact cover letter. A call contact cover letter is a document sent with your resume to companies that have no advertised job opening. This is basically for jobs that are hidden. They haven't advertised, but you have some contact you know that they will do in the future. That's a way to use a call contact call letter. Sending this letter provides you with an opportunity to be considered by the company for employment. Require elements. You're going to start with a strong subject line. What would you offer? If you're connected, mention it. You know somebody, mention it. Provide evidence of your experience and your connection. Conclude your email by offering next steps, such as potential time for a follow-up call or request for an interview or conversation. Send your letter to the most appropriate person. Use LinkedIn to find out the names of managers of employees in the department where you like to work. Here is an example of a cold contact cover letter. Just please take a look uh, to get an idea and try to make an example of it. Email messages. We have this chart taken from a very good site that I recommend, Constant Balance, and here they have a professional email message guidelines. So we mentioned the subject line, you can see here, thank you, and they talk about the position, assistant account executive interview consistently convey your purpose of the writing here you follow the example you have the greeting the font style you tell you what it had to be standard style try to avoid any color fonts or playful just a very professional style for the font the lens has to be concise as possible try to avoid this doesn't look professional at all with these emojis spelling and grammar Double check it before you send it. Spelling and grammar, very important. That can really uh, give a, a bad impression to a potential employer. So keep this guideline when you're preparing your email messages. That will help you to keep it professional. When sending an email cover letter, 
basically you need to include your name and the job title in the subject line of your message and also you need to list your contact information your signature don't put it in the body of the letter just put it at the end with your signature like the example here Susan Sharp they have the contact information just below and she's also including her cell phone number email address and a link to her LinkedIn profile here another illustration about a thank you email letter after an interview the do and the don't when you do it you send your email right away you include all your interviewers in the mail you provide links and you remind them of your qualifications what you don't do is you send grammatically incorrect emails send something that makes you look bad no picture or crazy things you send some emotional caricature or pictures or you stop your interview by sending several messages no don't do any of that please follow the guidelines so that you can improve your chances email thank you messages when a company is making a hiring decision quickly it's appropriate to send an email thank you message that way you'll be sure the hiring manager gets in in a timely manner you will format your email slightly differently than you would a formal letter start with the subject which should be thank you and your name you might want to include the title of the job you interview for as well omit all the contact information and the date and begin with your greetings the body of your letter will be the same as it will be the closing and your signature will include your contact information it's important to remember that an email is still professional correspondence and should not include abbreviation, slang or emojis here an example of an email thank you message please take a look and learn the format And here is the example of a follow-up email after a meeting sent by a potential network person contacting the company. So take a look at it and I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Thank you very much.